Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door is one of the most beloved games from the Golden Age of Consoles, the sixth generation. A turn-based RPG, Thousand Year Door has much more expanded dialogue than the mainline series, and a story that is simply beyond saving Princess Peach from an evil force. I mean, the story is still saving Princess Peach from an evil force, but at least it is in Bowser. Mostly. Thousand Year Door is the second entry in the Paper Mario series, the first one being Paper Mario, followed by Thousand Year Door, Super Paper Mario, the one we don't talk about, and Origami King. Throughout the game, you'll meet a collection of interesting characters that will join Mario on the adventure, including a Goomba, a Bomb, a Ghost, a Yoshi, a Koopa, a Mouse, and this character Vivian, initially part of the Shadow Sirens who defects and joins Mario about halfway through the game. She's a strong damage dealer and is earnest and optimistic in her interactions with other characters, and is probably the companion who has the biggest development throughout the story. However, perhaps the most interesting part of her character is that she's a transgender woman, which, for a game from 2004 and in the likes of the Mario series, is pretty impressive and noteworthy, although there's a reason you're probably not aware of that fact. So, who is Vivian, how does she fit into the story, and how does a game portray her as a transgender character? Vivian is initially part of the Shadow Sirens, a group of three characters who are working for the main villain, Sir Grodus. They're made up of Beldum, the oldest and leader of the group, Marilyn, described as the strong silent type, and Vivian, the youngest of the three. Her demeanour at the start of the game is shy and withdrawn. Her sisters constantly tease, bully and blame her for various things, with the official player's guide from when the game was released saying she has an inferiority complex. We first meet the Shadow Sirens after Chapter 1, where Sir Grodus has brought them in to help capture the Chaos Emeralds. I mean the Power Crystals. I mean the Crystal Stars. The game's magical MacGuffins that when collected open the titular Thousand Year Door, which contains the Shadow Queen. The Shadow Sirens are first encountered by Mario and Co in Chapter 2, in the Bogby Woods, where they are looking to get the map that shows the location of the Crystal Stars, currently held by Mario. However, the Shadow Sirens lose the poster of Mario, meaning they don't recognise him and allowing Mario to slip by. They later find the poster and, realising their mistake, fight Mario in which they lose and run off. Before the fight, Vivian introduces the group as the Shadow Beauties, which Beldum admonishes her for, saying she'll be punished later. The Shadow Sirens don't appear in Chapter 3, with Mario and Co joining an underground fight club. Or should I say overground? Fight club? The next time we see them is in Chapter 4, for the Pigs the Bell Tolls, after Mario and Co are in Twilight Town to clear an evil spirit from a church. The Shadow Sirens are also in Twilight Town, planning to fight Mario and his friends with their new weapon, the Super bob -omb. However, Beldum loses the Super bob -omb and promptly blames Vivian for it, sending her to go find it. Meanwhile, Mario has defeated the evil spirit in the church, but it turns out it has stolen his identity. Mario returns to Twilight Town to find help, where he meets Vivian. After helping her find the lost Super bob -omb, Vivian joins Mario in his hunt to get his name back, although she isn't aware of his true identity. They eventually find out that Duplis is the name of the spirit that has stolen Mario's identity, and Mario and Duplis battle, with Duplis having all of Mario's friends on his side. Vivian initially doesn't help Mario, struggling to come to the fact that she's been helping her target, but after a few turns, she joins Mario and helps him win the battle. After defeating Duplis, Mario regains his identity, and Vivian offers to join the party as a permanent member. She stays in the party as you fight undead pirates in Chapter 5, solve mysteries on a train in Chapter 6, and in Chapter 7, she joins you on the way to the moon, and assists you in the most challenging of all trials. Answering quiz questions. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? What is this? In the final area of the game, the Palace of Shadows, when Beldum, Marilyn, and Duplis confront Mario and Co, Vivian feels comfortable fighting her sisters. She remains a party member as Mario fights the final few bosses of the game, including Sir Grodus, Bowser, Goth Peach, and the Shadow Queen. In the endgame epilogue, it is revealed that Vivian returns to her sisters who have renounced their evil ways and with them promising never to be mean to her again. It is also suggested that Vivian is going to confess to Mario that she loves him, but it doesn't follow through with it, instead saying that Mario and Peach make a cute couple. As a party member, her four abilities are punching enemies, setting every enemy on fire, hiding in the shadows, and sending a kiss that confuses the enemy it hits. Which is what would happen if a cute girl sent me a kiss. Vivian makes a few sporadic appearances in future Paper Mario games and crossovers. In Super Paper Mario, she appears as a catch card, and in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, she appears as a sticker in the World of Light mode. But in terms of being a playable character, that's it for Vivian. 
So, how does Vivian fit in as a transgender character? Based on the past 5 minutes of the video, it seems like it doesn't come up as a core part of the game. And you're right, it doesn't. At least not in the English language version. In the original Japanese version of the game, Vivian refers to herself with the pronoun Atai, an informal first-person pronoun mostly used by girls. During the fight between the Shadow Sirens and Mario in Chapter 2, Vivian introduces the group as the three Shadow Sisters. Beldum interjects, saying that, where the Shadow Trio, wherever these three sisters, aren't you a man? Vivian yields and says it was an accident, but Beldum says she'll punish Vivian later. Using Gumbella's tattle ability in the battle, the description for Vivian is a member of the Shadow Trio and the younger sister, no wait brother. When she becomes a playable party member, her party description follows a similar trend, saying, a former member of the Shadow Trio, he may look like a girl, but he's actually a boy. In Super Paper Mario, the sequel to Thousand Year Door, Vivian's catch card refers to Vivian with male pronouns, translating as a cute boy wielding fire magic who was once part of a group of enemies known as the Shadow Trio. It's important to note that transgender topics only came into wider public awareness in the 1990s in Japan, with gender-affirming surgery legal in 1997 and legal documentation changes available since 2003 in line with similar acts in other countries such as the United Kingdom, although Japanese law is rather draconian and restrictive compared to other countries. Being trans is legally regarded as a disorder, and is seen as something to be tolerated rather than embraced. Trans women especially face difficulties in being legally recognised. Legally changing gender is subject to requirements, including being at least 20 years old, not being married, not having a child, as well as undergoing sex reassignment surgery and sterilisation. The game's non-committal dialogue for Vivian's gender, with Vivian saying she is a woman and other characters saying she is a man, is because during the development period of the game, around 2002, having a confirmed transgender character would be difficult to implement both legally and culturally. In terms of the Shadow Siren's designs, Vivian is the most overtly feminine, compared to Beldum and Marilyn. Her design is of a more rounded and plushy body shape compared to her sisters. Vivian's pink hair and hat are also a common way to code a character's femininity, a recurring trend of transgender characters who may or may not be subject to future videos when I get round to them. However, this isn't the end of the story, as across the various international versions and localizations of the game, the nature of Vivian's gender changes. Vivian's name is different across the various translations, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use Vivian for all of them. We've already looked at the Japanese version, where Vivian self-identifies and presents as a girl, with her sisters and other characters saying she's a boy. So, how do other language translations of the game differ? The Spanish and French versions are mostly direct translations from the Japanese with Vivian still self-identifying as a girl, but with other characters saying she's a boy. In Chapter 2, Beldum still calls Vivian a boy, after Vivian introduces the group as the Three Shadow Sisters. Her party description in the Spanish version says that Vivian looks like a girl, but is actually a boy, while the French version is distinctly harsher, with Vivian's party description specifically stating he pretends to be a girl, but is actually a boy. Meanwhile, the aforementioned English and German language versions remove any reference to Vivian being transgender or instances of her being misgendered, implicitly implying that she is a cisgender girl. Across all the translations from the original Japanese, there is a consistent trend of describing Vivian as being very cute. The title log says she's so cute she's able to infatuate anyone when in English. He's a boy, but he's too cute, in French. This pretty witch must have many admirers in German. And although he is a boy, everyone falls in love with the genuine beauty of the youngest member of the trio in Spanish. The standout, though, is the Italian version, which says Beldum's sister, or rather ex-brother. He was a man, but now she's a comely woman. Comely meaning attractive or pleasant to look at. Therefore, specifically stating that Vivian is transgender, something unique to the Italian language version. Her party description follows on from this, saying, An ex-member of the Shadow Trio, she used to be a man, but now she's a woman and proud of it. And the exchange between Vivian and Beldum in Chapter 2 also plays out differently in the Italian version. Vivian still introduces the group as the Shadow Sisters, and Beldum asks Vivian to explain how there are three sisters. Vivian responds by saying that, yes, you two are sisters true, but I feel like a woman too, and I'm proud to have become one. As to why the Italian version keeps Vivian's transgender nature, but adapts the original dialogue to be more positive about her being transgender, Italy was one of the first nations to allow trans people to legally change their gender, doing so in 1982, perhaps leading to greater acceptance of genderqueer people and explaining why Vivian is distinctly more proud about herself. 
So, depending on which version of the game you play, Vivian can be a self-identified transgender woman, whom several characters in the game misgender, or she can be an implicitly implied cisgender woman. According to VGSalesCharts.com, Faust and the Adults sold around 2 million copies worldwide, with the majority, 1.5 million, being in North America. About 500,000 in Japan and 250,000 in Europe. So, most players who bought the game, which you know, I totally did, won't be familiar with the original depiction of Vivian's gender, with the vast majority's knowledge of her gender being that she is a cisgender girl. It's a shame that the original intention of her gender identity isn't seen by the majority of players. The original Japanese version certainly isn't flawless, and looking back nearly 20 years after its original release, the language choices are non-committal to making Vivian a trans woman. The game's dialogue is certainly operating within the legal restrictions of having a transgender character in Japanese culture. But it really shouldn't be understated the significance of including a queer character, much less a gender non-conforming character in a video game from 2004, particularly in such a high-profile series as Mario. Even today, many people struggle with, refuse to accept, or shout about transgender characters online. And overall, as a character, I like Vivian. Amongst the game's various party members that Mario gains during the adventure, Vivian is probably my favourite. Not only because she is powerful in battle, but because she is a pleasant and bubbly character who isn't defined by her being transgender. The Italian version is the only one that truly commits to making Vivian transgender. The other versions either attempt to play her down as being a cross-dressing boy, or they omit any mention of her being transgender entirely. The line where she says she feels like a woman and is proud to have become one are good words to live by. Hi! If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you! This is the first time I've done a project of this type and size, and it was a lot of fun to make, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank the following Patreons! If you'd like to support me for future videos, there's a link in the description. I also have a Twitter you can follow me at, if any of you still use Twitter. And the next video I have planned is about Pavati from The Outer Worlds. So, subscribe to be sure to learn when that comes out. And until then, stay fresh!